So here's a person going through an engineer obstacle, and this is not on YouTube yet, so you guys are seeing this for the first time. And he's not a robot, okay? That's a human being. <laughs> but here is a robot. And here it is autonomously doing the same thing. Using both arms and legs. That was hard. And here, if you notice, down here there are alligators and snakes. <laughs> so it's not as good as a human, but we are getting there. And here's another demonstration of climbing very tall stairs autonomously and then walking on a plank that is very, very narrow. So we believe that we're actually making significant progress in getting to the level that you saw Rob later climbing up those rocks. We're also trying, I'll give another example, to make robots that can move on rough terrain at the same speed that robots can move on flat ground. And so the idea here is that if we want a robot to be a scout, to be able to move around quickly, we have to figure out how to have both rough terrain capabilities and speed. Some of you have seen this video, but it's actually not the same one. Because in the video that was online, the robot went 28.7 miles an hour, which was the speed of the same bolt. Okay? Uh, here you'll see it's going to go a little faster. So here it is how it starts. And this robot is constrained uh, on the uh, roll axis. So it's running on a boom. And now I'll skip ahead to this one here. We'll start at 28 miles an hour and watch this very carefully. And then we actually get the third. And then you see out the back of the robot is some hydraulic fluid. Uh, and what is happening is that one of the actuators is pressing against the stop and it finally bursts through the seal and then all the fluid comes out. What limited the speed of this robot was actually the size of the hydraulic pumps that they have there, the amount of power that they can bring to bear there. Uh, I want to show you a slow motion to understand what is scientifically going on here. It's not just turning the knob up. This robot has a flexible back and the control of that flexible back as well as the dynamic coupling between all the degrees of freedom is why this uh, particular task is difficult. So here you see the, uh, the bending of the back and how that's important in uh, allowing the robot to go 